In this video, we'll introduce subgroups, semigroups, and monoids. So let's start with subgroups. We say that G prime is a subgroup of G if G prime is a group, and for every two elements in G prime, we have those same elements in G. It's kind of similar to the subset relationship, except we're talking about whole groups. So what's an example of one? Well, we have G with the integers and addition, and G prime with the even integers and addition. So just to kind of lay out these sets, the integers would be negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, all the way on. And the even integers would just be negative two, zero, two, so on and so forth. So the first thing we know, just with working with these before, is that G and G prime are groups. So G, G prime, our groups. But the important thing here, so first of all it satisfies that g prime is a group, but also we have that the even integers is a subset of the integers, which means that for every element in g prime it's also going to appear in g. They're both groups, they both have the same operation, g prime is a subset of g, well 2z is a subset of z, therefore we can say here that G prime is a subgroup of G. And that follows because one, G prime is a group, and two, the set, the even integers as a subset of the integers. So again, it's a group, and for every two elements in G prime, we have them in G. So that's one example of a subgroup. In fact, there's a theorem that I'm going to prove. And that theorem is that if H and J are subgroups of G, then H intersection J is a subgroup of G. So we do have to prove associativity, but um, it's, kind of, it's kind of straightforward, so I will skip that. I'll just mainly focus on closure, identities, and inverses. So those are the three things we kind of have to prove here. So first of all, we have to show that it's closed. So first of all, let's pick two elements, A and B, and well, we'll assume that they are in H intersection J. Okay, but what do we know? Well, H and J are subgroups of G, and A and B are in the intersection, which means that A and B must be in H, and A and B must be in J. But these are groups, right? So if H and J are groups, then that means that A dot B has to be in H, and A dot B has to be in J. Therefore, using the intersection, we know that A dot B also has to be in H intersection J. And because, of course, this these are subgroups of G, this implies that the H intersection J is also a subgroup of G here. So we've proven that if we have two elements in the intersection, we also have their product essentially. So we've proven closure. Second one we have to prove would be associativity, but I think associativity is pretty straightforward. We see that if A, B, and C are in the intersection, then A, B, and C will be in each of them. They're both associative. Therefore, they'll be associative in the intersection as well. Um, so I kind of want to focus on the identity. So first of all, if E is going to be in H, and then E is going to be in J, then clearly E is going to be in H intersection J. So that was the identity kind of straightforward. <laughs> There's really not much more than that because H and J are both groups, so they contain an identity. Therefore, the intersection of them should both have the same identity. And we know they're the same identity because H and J are subgroups of G. So E in H implies E is in G and E in J implies that E is in G, which means that both of these E's better be the same thing because these two identities have to be the same because we can only have one identity per group, which we've proven in the last video. 
Okay, the third one, which we'll prove, is going to be inverses. So, let's just assume, and I'll do this in purple, let's assume that we have A in our intersection H and J. Well, this implies that A is an H and A is in J. But H and J are groups, which means that this implies that A inverse is going to be an H and A inverse is going to be in J. And of course, these are both subgroups of G, so these will be the same inverse. And of course, this implies together that A inverse is going to be in the intersection of H and J. So we've proven now that if H and J are subgroups of G, then the intersection of them is also a subgroup of G. Of course, associativity, we do have to prove as well. I just left it out from the writing because it's kind of monotonous, but it follows the same pattern. So now there's different types of partial groups, which we can call them. One is a semigroup. And a semigroup occurs when we have some H and operation where H is closed and the operation is associative. So these are properties one and two. So closure and associativity. A monoid is a semigroup with an identity. Or we can think of a monoid as a group without inverses. So I've kept all of these conditions the same throughout the video and I will always keep them the same. Um, just to think of a semigroup having properties one and two, a monoid having properties one, two, and three, and then a group having all four properties. So I'm going to ask one question with semigroups and monoids. I'm going to ask, is this group, or sorry, is this set an operation, a monoid or a semigroup? So because I'm asking monoid or semigroup, what, what property do we have to check to distinguish between the two? What's the difference between a monoid and a semigroup? Well, a monoid has identity elements, and a semigroup does not. So let's check to see if there's an identity element in 2z. Well, what is 2z? Again, we can kind of write it out. Let's just go up to negative 2, 0, 2. And of course, this is multiplication. So do we have an identity element with just even integers and multiplication? Well, what is ex when it comes to just z on its own. Well, when we have anything times one, we get itself back. So if we take two z, what is the identity element? Well, there isn't any. There is no identity element because it should be one, but it can't be one. So there is no identity element. Therefore, is it a monoid or semigroup? Well, a monoid requires it, a semigroup does not. Therefore, this is going to be a semigroup. But we should check to see if it's closed and if it's associative. But we know multiplication, multiplication is associative, multiplication is also closed. So if we have an even times an even, we'll always get an even back. So it is closed and it's associative, so we're good. It's a semigroup. What about this one, 2z plus 1 and multiplication? So what is 2z plus 1? Well, this is just the set of odd integers. So maybe we can see where we're going with this. Negative 3, negative 1, 1 and 3, so on and so forth. So first of all, is it closed? Well, if we get an odd times an odd, we get an odd back, so it's closed. 2, it is definitely associative. But the important part here is 3. What is the identity for this? Well, the identity with multiplication is just 1. So anything multiplied by 1 will take it back to itself. And it is in the set of odd integers. Therefore, it's a closed, it's associative, has an identity. So it is going to be a monoid. So these terms are important for understanding what we'll talk about in the next video. But for now, if you have any questions about monoids, semigroups, and subgroups, please leave them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them.